the beginning of this book, um, if you guys could just take a peek into this, this is a little bit of the introduction. And it says, while preparing for this book, I asked God, what do you want me to convey to my readers? He softly yet boldly explained, I command you to be honest, sincere, and humble. With that comes transparency. Go as deep as you need to go because I've delivered you from the hands of the enemy's assignment. He will attempt to distract you, but his attempts and assignments have been canceled. Furthermore, understand that my people have become numb to, re to religious rhetoric and churchy crochets. So I charge you with assignment to bring back the integrity and authenticity of my word and my promises. What have I done for you that I am not just to do for others? He went on to say, don't worry about being judged. I am the only one qualified to judge you. Your sins are forgiven and you are covered in the blood of my precious son, Jesus Christ. He says, if you touch not but one of my children, I will ensure you will never have to worry about any resources for this vision. I have already dispatched angels to carry you when you become weak. I have already provided the paper for the check that is coming as the deposit to assist you along the way. I have already made the provision for you. You have been chosen for this work, and I will not leave you comfortless. As I have provided for Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, as well, I will provide for you. And the last thing he said is have fun. I'm having fun, y'all. <laughs> special needs. Not just any old special needs. We didn't know what was wrong with her until she was about eight years old. Eight years old. But my mom kept saying, she's perfect. She's perfect. I'm like, really? She's perfect. Really? She's perfect. She's perfect. Um, for you guys who don't know, my, uh, I have an affinity for what I call big girls. And then I have affinity for families with children with special needs. And God has given me an amazing place in the lives of such wonderful people, I believe. I always say as big girls, and I'm still a big girl, contrary to what you believe. Yes, 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 yes. <laughs> Well, anyway, um, I, I just want to share this. While I was doing this, I'm saying, God, who, who am I supposed to talk to? What am I supposed to tell them? I don't have to tell them that. Do I have to tell them that? Yeah, you got to tell them that. Yeah. Um, so I want to share some of the things that God said I got to tell some people about. So it says here, I wanted to know, um, I wanted to know who was going to speak to the women in the house burdened with the spirit of suicide because they could not value, they could not find the value and worth God created in them. I was once that woman. Since then, I've been delivered from that spirit. So I wanted to share life after the attempt because what is it supposed to feel like? when you tried to kill yourself and you couldn't. I'll tell you about it later. Who is going to speak to the women with extreme levels of infidelity? For instance, before she was leaving to go to a conference, she found out that her husband of six years had a baby on the way with a family friend. Yeah, I can speak to that one, because that was me. I wanted to reach that woman to show her how much life would be afterwards after going through such overwhelming experience. I wanted to speak to her because her husband will go on to father two more children while they were married. Yeah, that was this one. Yes, yes, yes. I want to speak to the woman with a child who special, who, who, whose child suffered with spe um, extreme special needs. The chronic condition of her child will prove so intense sometimes that she would be begging God to take her life at night. That was me. That was me. I wanted to speak to the women who are struggling with sexual immorality. We don't want to talk about that in the church, do we? But that was me. The women who were in the church every time the doors were open thinking their attendance would excuse their sexual sin. I needed to be in the face of the woman who struggled with trusting God for her own husband, so she decided to match on to somebody else. <coughs> that was me. I, I needed to get in front of the sisters and speak to them about swinging through me and like a child swinging from monkey bars. The one who did not know how to spend time alone for the fear she would remain alone. You got it? That was me. Mm, thank you, Lord, for deliverance. Thank you, Lord, for deliverance. I'm good being single today, y'all. I've got, got to tell y'all that. It's good being single. It's good being me. It's good loving me. First. So that's a four the last time. Don't get it twisted. It's a four the last time. <laughs> but anyway, I want to speak to.
to the woman who, find her, who found her physical weight a burden and a buffer to promote her many destructive behaviors. I want to speak to that woman who finds it difficult to understand her worth because we perpetually invest our value into men. Other things that offer, and other things that offer no return on it. We're so eager, eager to prove to our families and our girlfriends that we have finally met the man we have all been waiting for. We build him up, pump him up while we're we torn down ourselves. Society says that fat girls are good to be used and abused, but they're not worthy to be loved. I want to speak to that woman. Not the one pretending and hiding behind the big girl confidence. I mean the girl who relies on being the life of the party because she does not understand where she fits in the crowd. So instead of beating them, she joins them. I declare the wait is over. I will not allow the pain of my past to dictate my future. I advocate on every behalf, on behalf of every person ready to join me on this journey to self-love. I realize people all over the world are hurting and need to know how to ease the pain. I thought if I could just make it to church, something the pastor would say or the choir would sing would make me feel better. Week after week, the church is overcrowded with six of these hurting people like a local emergency room and trauma bays all over the country. Like hospitals, people are crowding churches because of wounds inflicted by themselves and others. Week after week, instead of dealing and addressing with specific origin of pain, we prefer to cover them up with a wet band-aid. Ineffective. In fact, we actually need major surgery to pull our lives back together. Furthermore, we need adequate time to heal our broken souls, not just our hearts. I know from experience how I've gone through some traumatic experiences, and instead of being treated for the extreme injuries, I kept on moving like I didn't feel the pain at all. It was like comparing a paper cut to an amputation. That part of my life is over now. It's over. It is not productive, and it did not give God the glory he desired. So, with that...